Ladies and gentlemen, Casey Mir, welcome to the daily update. Hope you guys had a good day trading today. Market is up 1.3%, 1.5% on the S&P NASDAQ, up about 1% there. Semiconductor lagging today. I remember the other day, Semiconductor was holding up better while the S&P 500 is down quite a bit. But today, we're not seeing quite a bit of move. Just pretty much flat there on the semi. However, Dow making a move. Small caps up close to 3%. Transport, 3.5%. Banks, 3%. Energy, 3%. How many 3%ers do we have today? Home builders, 3% while biotech, healthcare, pretty much flat today. Retail up 2%, emerging market 1.2% there. Bitcoin, 1% or so. Gold, silver, miner continue to struggle there. Dollar up uh, pretty much flat there. Oil up 3%. Treasury bond flat. VIX got uh, pretty much tanked today with the equities being up. Let's stick with, that, stick with the S&P 500 ETF. Spider. 65 minutes are here so this is where we closed yesterday and uh, we extensively talked about the nature of the shenanigans that we're dealing with on the last night's video and today what happened was we opened pretty much flat there in the first hour and bulls kind of went for it you can see the first hour price action there right right here and then second hour, we see that continuation to the upside. Keep in mind, first and second hour, that midterm moving average, what worked as so poor prior, previously acting as resistance on that first and second hour. And we can see that by looking at those upper wicks there. And, for the, and, and finally, on the third hour, we thrust it above it. You can see right there on the third hour, we broke above that midterm moving average. And ever since then, it's been just kind of floating floating in that vicinity just right above that short or the midterm moving average and uh, with these spinning top candles last three hours basically spinning tops tell us that there's indecision uh just kind of hanging out trying to figure out what's gonna be the next move and that's a, today's price action i think a lot of people are and, and this is what the market does. We're in this kind of a environment, very choppy, shenanigan, up and down environment, you know. And we kind of talked about how this is a good level for you know some sort of a oversold bounce, and we did see that oversold bounce. Let's kind of zoom out here and get a bigger picture, right? So we get we, get, we kind of have to, we can understand where we at as far as overall midterm is concerned. So we talked about the midterm. Moving, and we're back above the midterm moving average as of today. Uh, however, just getting slightly above it, it doesn't really mean anything. We need to see a follow through. Um, that you can see that, however, though, what's important is though that 50% retracement, Fibonacci retracement, that's where we found support there. And this gap has been protected. You can see right there in that vicinity, we did find this support there and we did see that bounce. You're probably, probably wondering, what is that purple box? Okay, what do you got? What did you have that purple box in that vicinity? This is a vicinity where market could potentially, because we did make lower low, right? You can see that that's a lower low. And we saw rather dramatic downturn on the yesterday's price action. And I, I kind of feel like this might be the level where if, if we if we do see a follow through next two trading sessions not just tomorrow tomorrow's friday and also monday if we can see the follow through two days in a row um there might be a good it doesn't mean it's gonna straight up and you might you know what i'm saying it might go up come back down cultivate its own higher low and then finally that you know purple box might become the proverbial bottom but again we need the evidences of that so if we do see a move to the upside, at least kind of reclaiming this short-term moving average, there's a good chance this might be a good level for that trap to happen. Who is this market trapping? Both bulls and bears. How is this market trapping both bulls and bears? Well, first of all, bulls got stopped out on the last night's or yesterday's price action, right? Bulls got scared. They, they're stopped out. They're no longer long anymore. And that's kind of what these levels do, right? And not majority market participants, especially long longs, they get stopped out and market goes without. And this, is, this isn't something new. This has been happening since the inception of the stock market. Stock market is going to make sure you're out before it goes without you. 
And also it's trapping the bears because, well, the bears are thinking, okay, this is it, man. This How many days and weeks and months we've been hearing that from the, from the bears since probably 2020, like April, right? It's been like two years. They've been calling, this is it, man. This is, every time we see like 2% correction, well, this is it, bro. This is the game over for this market. And then it traps the bears because then these guys continue to add on to their shorts or, you know, get into some YOLO, lotto, stupid put options that's going to just burn through money. And that's why this could be a potential level for trapping for both bulls and bears if, if we can see the price reclaiming that short-term moving average. Let's try to oscillate and see if we can extract any more information. And here's another thing that I, the reason why I put the purple box there, so you can see right here, we definitely got lower lows going on, right? Can we all agree that these are lower lows, right? Your eighth grade daughter will tell you those are lower lows. You can go and ask her. She will tell you those are lower lows. Is this low lows here too also? Yeah, those are lower lows. We got low, lower lows. We're talking, you know, these uh, last several sessions, right? Several trading sessions, right? Those are lower lows, right? Can we uh, agree that those are low lows? Yes, we can all agree that. Interesting, the, interesting that oscillator doesn't agree with the price section. A lot of times when that happens, you know, uh, that bullish divergence could make things extremely, extremely difficult for the sellers, right? Just because it happened before doesn't mean it, it has to happen, right? Market doesn't always repeat, but it rhymes. So you could do, it could have some kind of twist or some sort. But this uh, signal right here on that oscillator definitely currently as of today, uh, favoring the buyers only in with one contingency. That contingency is if the price can see a follow through tomorrow and potentially Monday early morning and reclaim that short term moving average right here, similar to what we saw right there. If we can see that, if we can see this oscillator continue to advance to the upside with that, this purple box right here, ladies and gentlemen, is a potentially a level for that bottoming process to occur. Obviously, if you're a seller, if you're a bear, you really hate this market and you've been suffering because you hate this market, but market keeps going higher and you want this market to just tank. You want to see 430s, man. Well, then obviously we need to see lower prices and uh, these gaps need to be filled. And this this dream that bears bulls have right now that bulls got going on well you want to dismantle that dream by breaking that and make that oscillator just go down and hit that oversold level that's what bears need to do if not because we're in an overall trend uh you know things could change shift things, the, the sentiment could shift very quickly i'll come back for you we'll reassess the situation Enjoy your evening. Good luck training tomorrow.